Today we're going to be talking about the past six months of running Pair AI, an AI startup. A lot has happened. We lost our co-founder and we almost got acquired for over a million dollars. It's also the one year anniversary of me quitting my nine to five sweet job to run a startup. So I'll be talking about if I regret it or not so that, you know, maybe you guys don't have to go through all this yourself. All right, let's head right in. So last episode, we raised money for our startup. And then right after we, uh, we lost our co-founder. Most of you guys already know this, like I posted all these updates on Instagram Reels and on the Discord community. So if you wanna follow along, just follow at Nang on Instagram. But long story short, yeah, he just isn't really too into the whole startup thing. And I would say that if you followed along from the beginning, I think most of the vlogs is mainly me convincing him to join me on this. So um, yeah, it kind of made sense. This was six months ago and now he's a streamer. And honestly, I think he'll do really great Yes, we're still homies. He lives across the street from me now. And I'm honestly just really happy that my friend can do what they want in life. Can I get one too? For Pair I, I was now a solo founder. And the next six months was probably the most grueling six months of my entire life. The team for Pair I grew to a size of four people. And we were just working nonstop, like 12 hours a day, to get Pair I V2 out. Pair IV2 was for less experienced developers and could build software for you. And it had tools like Pair I Creator that could build MVPs for you, Pair I Database that would take care of all the database stuff for you, and Pair I Launch that would help you get your projects online. And yeah, we added a lot of other tools to make this better for non experienced developers. We worked super hard on this for four months. Like, I honestly did not think it was possible for the grind to be harder than YC, but it actually was a lot harder. And yeah, after four long months, we launched Pair AI V2 in beta. We built all the infrastructure around these LLMs to make people's projects and build software. And it could build simple stuff like blog websites or simple games. But for more complicated things like an online shop that you need to buy something and it looks really nice, these LLMs would just introduce way too many bugs for it to deliver on the promise of building anything. I was also seeing the same in the entire space of no-code tools like Lovable and Bolt. Like they promise that you can have an idea and that you can build it, but when you actually try to, it just doesn't work. So yeah, I think at this point, the LLMs were just not fully there yet. And so yeah, this issue is manageable, like all the other tools are dealing with this. But I think we also had two other big issues. One was the fact that the team was fully remote. I was in New York because I didn't really like SF. James was in London, Himanshu was in India, and Rice was in SF. And hey, I don't know who ever thought it was a good idea for a startup to be remote. Maybe it was me. But whoever thought that, they were definitely wrong. Like it's fine for the product, but for the culture of a startup and also just everyone being alone all day, I think that's just not the right culture for a startup. And the second problem is more of a landscape thing. Like all these other code editor companies like Windsurf and Cursor, they raised a ton of money and were able to subsidize their users millions a week. And you know, I think it's fine. And honestly, like I'm a huge believer in competition, especially with products in the same exact industry doing the same thing like Uber and Lyft. But I think it would only make sense to go, you know, head to head if you have the right team for it. But yeah, as a solo founder with a remote team, it just does not make sense uh, for us. So I guess this was kind of obvious to other companies. And so at this point, my inbox was getting filled with acquisition offers. I never really wanted to get acquired. You know, our goal is to make useful stuff and then have a billion dollar company. But I've also read like the biographies of pretty much all the startup people like Elon and the founders of Stripe. And a lot of them in their early career, their first company got acquired. So I figured that I'd at least go and talk to some of these companies that wanted to acquire Perii. So I flew back to SF. I don't really like SF, but that's for another time. And yeah, they were all pretty excited to acquire Pair AI. It would pretty much just be a talent acquisition, meaning they just wanted to hire me and hopefully the Pair AI team. And yeah, they were offering a lot of money, like over a million dollars, which to me, it was crazy. At this point, I was thinking a lot about what to do. And so I went to go talk to Pair AI's advisor, David Lee, the creator of Google Photos. So I asked him what I should do. And this guy just asked me what I want to do. And you know, in my head, I'm thinking like, I thought you were supposed huh? to tell me what I should do, but it's okay. I tell him that, you know, really all I want to do is make a billion dollar company and make useful stuff. And I feel like getting acquired would be a good stepping stone to one day getting there. And so he's quiet for a bit. And then he looks at me and gives me this piece of advice. He tells me, 
don't do temporary things to prepare for something just go do that something and you know when i think about it honestly i think that's <laughs> that just might be terrible advice like for me when i look back i feel like i got to a pretty good spot by doing temporary things to help me get to what i wanted to do but either way you know on this specific case i think that it was actually very very correct advice and then after this he was like bro nang like you have funding just go and make a good startup and then i said okay you are actually just so right and i went back to all these companies and told them that i can't do an acquisition or like aqua hire and i just have to go and do my own thing what? after this i flew back to new york city and here's what's coming next i feel like a lot of you guys already know this because i posted like a raw video of me talking about everything a month ago on the discord community but here's a tldr so first, the pair I code editor is not going anywhere. I feel like it's a pretty good business in the short term. Like we have over a thousand users a day and yeah, it's not going anywhere. I do see a day where LLMs get good enough where we can actually deliver on the promise of building software or like building anything with the infrastructure that we built. And when that day comes, like we'll be ready and all. But I think for now, the development on pair I code editor will be paused. So yeah, we're pivoting with a fresh start. And I just wanted to say again, just thank you to James, Himanshu, and Bryce. They're actually so goaded during the time working on the code editor. And shout out to the Parii community who have stuck through uh, like all the Parii stuff from the beginning, like from the bottom of my heart, just thank you. Like we would be nothing without you guys. I think the thing that makes me the most happy is hearing like a lot of the Parii community that made code commits to Parii, they got jobs because of it. So that just makes me really happy. And as for Perry I, we're not going anywhere. I honestly feel like this is just the beginning and the goal is still the same. It's just to make useful stuff and one day have a $1 billion company. And to get here, I actually have a master plan that I can't tell anybody about when it's done. And yeah, in fact, I just sent our investors this video. I'm telling you now, I have plans that I cannot share with you right now because the haters will sabotage me. I have plans that I cannot share with you right now because the haters will sabotage me. But yeah, stay tuned for the next video to see what's next. I will say it's in B2C and is AI, obviously. I think it's gonna be great. Okay, and the last topic is, is actually my one year anniversary of quitting my nine to five sweet job at a quad firm. And I think the thing I get asked the most is if I regret it or not. And you know, when I talk about this stuff on, on YouTube, I try to imagine that I'm talking to a younger version of myself because I don't know, maybe it's helpful for other people that are either on a similar path or feel similar to me. So this is what I have to say. I think my life on this path, is just objectively worse than before. Like I would say in my nine to five job, it's objectively nicer to have people just tell you what to do during that time. And then afterwards, you're pretty much free. You can just cook and you don't need to think about work at all. But for startups, there's a million problems and it's literally your responsibility to fix them or else, you know, either your users are cooked or your company is cooked. So yeah, I'll just keep that in mind. But for me, I feel like even though my life is maybe objectively harder and worse, I do think that it's more fulfilling, which is pretty much just all I care about. At this point, I'm pretty much certain that I never want to have a nine to five again. And yeah, I would say it's the same as a year ago. Like if you have something that you want to do, I would say prepare a lot for it. And then when the moment feels right, just go and do it. And I think like at the very least, you'll find out more about yourself and what motivates you. And that will probably just help you out in general. And of course you should not do it if you need to pay like, I don't know, your parents' hospital bills or something like that. But honestly, I saw my analytics and most of you guys are a lot like me where the alternative is to play video games. So yeah, I don't know. I feel like it might make sense to do what you want. That's about it. Again, if you want to follow along for the journey a bit closer, follow my Instagram. It's adnotnang. I post like daily updates. And yeah, I'll say for Perii, you know, it's a fresh start. It took the Perii code editor quite a bit to get off the ground. So it's just going to be the same thing again. And yeah, you know, as always, we have some haters online. I think it's fine. Like we'll be out of the spotlight for a bit and then we'll be back even stronger. All right, that's about it. Catch you guys later. Peace.